I'm not sure what the cultural critiques are. I mean, you know, I'm Black American and I don't find myself to be <laughs> culturally deficient in any way. And when I look around my family and my community, I see very obvious uh, structural causes for the situations they're in. In the same way that I see when I look at a lot of white communities, for example, you know, when I look at, let's say this is the stereotypical example, but a, a rural white community in West Virginia, I don't subscribe to the belief that the reason they are in multiple generations of poverty is because of a cultural deficit. I see globalization. I see trade deals that shipped uh, industrial jobs overseas. I see a changing energy market that is making it less and less fruitful and profitable for coal mining to persist. I see environmental pressures that also constrain the industry that was the only industry that, that community was able to benefit from for a long time. I see policies that were decided to set it up as being extractive in nature. So the benefits of all of that coal mining from that community over the years never got put back into the community. I see an opioid crisis driven by the Sacklers and other pharmaceutical players that intentionally preyed on these communities, pushing drugs and oversubscribing opioids to this community in a way that has had devastating effects. So with all of that going on, and that's just taking that particular white community as an example, and when there's similar things that have happened in Black America with the well-documented push by the CIA of drugs into Black communities, et cetera, et cetera, and on and on down the line, redlining we've discussed, why with all of those structural factors at play, we would skip over all of that and start talking about the ephemera of culture, which it's my view that the government doesn't have really any ability or perhaps any um, authority to start trying to legislate over. If I thought, you know, Barack Obama standing on a stage, as he has done, saying, Black people pull up your pants and act right, would have some magical effect on economic outcomes and people in deep poverty in this country, then I'd say he can do it all day. And in, in fact, he can do it all day. It's a free country. There's nobody stopping him. But there have always been people, both within and outside of the Black American community, people like Barack Obama, who have done the finger wagging and the argument that it really is a social issue at the same time that they are in a position of power to address the well-documented, really tangible, material issues at hand. And so what it starts to feel like is the focus on culture is a sleight of hand to prevent people from ever addressing any of the very obvious policy concerns that are staring us in the face. Because we don't have two parties in this country, we have one corporate party, and the fiction of there being some division between the two simply enables one to blame all of the failures of its, of its own party on the other in a cynical way that keeps us bouncing around and has millions and millions and millions of people caught in between. We were told in the lead up to the general election that we had to vote against Donald Trump because of the horrors of uh, family separation, kids in detention centers, all of Trump's, um, you know, openly bigoted immigration policies, and on and on and on. We were asked to forget the fact that those cages were built under the Barack Obama, Obama Biden administration, and now what we're seeing is kind of backpedaling um, and, and water treading. Uh, that is the hallmark of a party that's less interested in making a kind of moral crusade uh, to rectify and right the world more so than a party that is like complicit in that kind of evil that we riled against under the Trump administration.